Welcome back and in this video we are about to wind up our discussion about the plantar arches. In the first video we had discussed about the arches of the foot, the structure, the function and the composition of the arches. In the second video we discussed about the plantar aponeurosis or the plantar fascia extensively, the mechanism, the tri rod on stress mechanism, the windlass mechanism etc. And in this video we discuss about the weight distribution strategies as well as the muscles that contribute to the stability of the plantar arches. Don't worry that this is an extensive discussion about the plantar arches but in fact at the end of this video we will summarize this in a most simplified manner. Right now let us discuss about the weight distribution strategies in the plantar arches. Because you know that you can, for example, if this is a foot and if there is something in uh, like a, pa a paper or a pen that fall, that is in the ground, you can in fact take it with your uh, toes. You can in fact fold your uh, what you call arches to some extent. It shows that um, the arches of the foot are not fixed one. It is in fact a flexible one. For example, in the tie rod in the tie rod in the truss mechanism for example in the roof of a home or house we don't see a flexible arch it's a rigid one but our foot arches are a flexible one and if it is a flexible one or since it is a flexible one definitely the weight bearing mechanism can vary between uh, different individuals or within different feet. So what happens is that we have a unique mechanism for the weight distribution or the body weight distribution. Let us see what it is. For example, this is the food segment. Don't look into this trabecula. We will explain it later. Just look into this one. This is the body weight that is superimposed. For example, 100 percentage of the body weight that is superimposed. So what happens is that we have a keystone or we have a centralmost part in the arch which is the keystone of the arch i have already explained that that is the talus so you have to understand that the, the talus is the keystone of a longitudinal arch and thus the talus bears all this weight all this weight in fact passes first into the talus first into the talus and here we have the subtalar joint and here we have the talo navicular joint Talo navicular and on the other side we have the calcaneo cuboid joint. Calcaneo cuboid joint. Now what happens is that the talus, you can see that the trabecular system is oriented in a particular manner. To go on to that later, you can see that from here the body weight will be passed on to the subtalar joint. And also the body weight will be passed on to this joint. So that is a talo navicular and calcaneo cuboid. So what is the distribution strategy is 50 percentage of the body weight or the compression will pass on to subtalar joint and exactly the rest of the 50 percentage passes on to the talo navicular and calcaneo cuboid joint. Now there is a scenario where you have to understand you have the talo navicular and the calcaneo cuboid joint. What happens is that uh, just look into your foot uh, where is the location of the talus? The talus is in fact located on slightly to the medial line. That means the talus will be in line with the talo navicular joint. And the name itself says that, okay. Talus will be in line with the talo navicular joint. So what happens generally, the more body weight will be passed on to talo navicular joint than the calcaneocuboid joint. That is the first generalization is that in the 100% of the body weight that passes on to the lower limb, the all the body weight passes on to the on through the talus and from that 50 percentage passes to the subtalar 50 percentage passes to talo navicular and calcaneo cuboid and in that 50 percentage majority of the body weight passes through the talo navicular joint than the calcaneo cuboid joint because of the more medial location of the talus and the calcaneo cuboid joint receives a less receives less 
body weight and as a result we see that the long plantar ligaments and short plantar ligaments etc has less role in support of the medial longitudinal arches this point is not needed for exam point of view but you would just have to uh, if you are interested you can just remember due to this reason that our long and short plantar ligaments are not having much uh, definite role in the maintenance of the longitudinal now look into the trabecular system the trabecular system in the food angle food region clearly explains you the weight distribution strategies you can see that the trabeculars are more dense over this region at the distal end of the tibia where it is going to be uh, in articulation with the or where it is going to shed its uh, force into the talus and you see in the talons the action line or the trabecular lines is in exactly the same way one is oriented to the medial direction one, one is oriented post and posteriorly this is the posterior segment this is anterior one is oriented anteriorly the anteriorly trabecular system passes straight through the talocalcaneal joint talonavicular joint into the metatarsals and the tarsals here it also passes into the subtalar Doing like this, so this trabecular system, in fact, demonstrate us that uh, the body weight distribution has a unique mechanism in the foot. And you can see that some regions, the trabecular system, are more highly organized. For example, in the distal end of the talus, sorry, calcaneum, and here in the metatarsal head near the metatarsal head, because that is the point where the body is in contact with the ground. So in those regions, um, the tarsal the uh, trabecular system are more organized so this is what happens in stance phase how to write down this is what happens in stance phase if it is a bilateral um, stance or unilateral stance so if a person is standing in unilateral stance what happens in the, the only difference is that the entire weight 100 percentage will be passing through one of the foot one of the talus if it is in bilateral stance both the talus will be equally distributing or equal will have equally distributed body weights that would be the difference when a person is a quiet stance in quiet stance or when a person is uh, in quiet stance what there is some difference here that is the the calcaneum and the four foot segment this is in fact the rear foot segment you know that rear foot segment and this is the four foot segment if we closely look into the four foot and rear foot segment we see that the rear foot segment has a more amount of body weight passed on than the four foot segment nearly twice that is because you can see even the trabecular system are more dense and you know that when you are standing in a uh, what do you call quiet stance mostly the body weight is passing through the rear foot segment because that is how all the muscles forces and all the articulations are made on that's only difference that you have to remember or just think on your mind if you don't want to remember that point you can just uh, forget that and just remember 100 percentage body weight is past 50 to 50 and what happens with the taro navicular and calcaneal cuboid joints now we have to move on to what happens in walking okay uh, there is some difference in walking than compared to stand space when there is walking the food pressures the pressure that the food region has to sustain in fact change its direction for example you know that in the walking uh, in heel strike phase the food pressure would be in heel region and it moves on and moves on and it increases to a maximum at the uh, toe region at the metatarsal head where is it it reaches to a maximum at the metatarsal head that is when during the push-off phase when during the push-off phase we will be standing on the toes alone and at that time the body weight increases or the food pressure on that particular segment increases in manifestly and that is the reason why we have a plantar pleats over there that you can which are made up of which type of cartilage i told you in the previous classes there is a fibro cartilage which again withstand high amount of force so when you are standing in the foot for example in the push off phase a greater amount of body weight is passed on through the toe region that's the difference in a walking with a, a normal gait in normal gait it's an equal distribution normal stance it's an equal distribution but when it comes to walking the foot pressure increases manifest or increases with the different segments of the foot 
when it reaches up to the he is toe of face the foot interference pressure or foot pressure increases to the maximum at the tarsal metatarsal head or the toe region uh, that is during the push off phase of the gait cycle now all these changes can be uh, altered by various factors for example the age of the patient you know that the walking style will be different in adults as well as in old aged persons as well as in kids okay so the age of the person can influence this factor then some comorbidities like pest planners pest cavers etc if that is existing in the food it can interfere with the uh, patient or with the both with the pressure that is exerted onto the different regions of the foot then walking style certain persons can have how unique styles of walking for example they uh, walk with the toe out a greater amount of toe out then the foot interference pressure or foot pressure can change over the person some people will walk with a greater amount of stress onto the forefoot then the greater amount of stress can change in the forefoot segment then length of this halus okay the length of the toe they also can uh, the big toe also can be determine the extent of uh, uh, weight distribution in the foot. These are our additional points. Just have to remember the weight distribution in the foot can differ with the different factors like age, the comorbidities or co uh, conditions underlying. Comorbidities means condition underlying like pest planners, pest cavers, um, halus rigidus, etc. Then with the walking style of the patient, etc. Okay, now when walking is this is the scenario in walking, what can happen when it is going to be uh, running? Definitely, the things can change. The foot pressure can increase a greater amount of time to greater values, nearly from 1.14 in walking or 1.13 in walking it increases into 2.14 nearly that means a twice an increase is seen from a walking to running when it is running such a great amount of food pressure can change uh, and what happens in normal individual it can result in food pain and problems associated with that well if it is a diabetic person it can result in wear and tear of the skin around that region also definitely running also is influenced by factors like as pest planners, pest scavers, the higher the age of the patient, etc. So ultimately, if you uh, summarize this discussion, what you see is that the foot is not a flex rigid liver, instead it's a flexible river. The body weight distribution has a unique set of mechanism and when the 100% body weight is loaded onto the talus, it's equally distributed between forefoot and the midfoot or the uh, subtalar joint and talo cavicular and talo navicular joint if you look into this joint talon avicular is having more amount of weight distribution and now when we look into the walking the food pressure increases and it reaches a maximum at the top of region when you look into the running it increases greater amount the two fall times and it can result in problems associated even in healthy individuals or some problems in a diabetic patients etc so this is a general scenario this shows that uh, the food is a flexible region of liver and uh, the body distribution or weight distribution can vary between different individuals and with different conditions and the trabecular system in the food is well developed and is in line with the weight distribution strategies in the food and they are well organized in certain regions like the uh, heel region or the posterior end of the calcaneum where a lot of um, greater amount of force has been passed and as well as the metatarsal head now we want to see uh, the muscle forces that is or muscular contribution to the stability of plantar. Now, if you look into the muscles that are active or do contribute to the stability of the arches, we in fact have uh, two sets of muscles. One is the extrinsic muscles and one is the intrinsic muscles. And here we have the tibialis muscle, the anterior and the posterior muscle contributing to the arches. Then we have the fibularis longus muscle. Then we have the flexor digitorum longus muscle and fibularis teresius muscle. So these are the four or five uh, extrinsic muscles which has a role in the arch function or the stability of the arch. What are they? The tibialis anterior and posterior, fibularis longus muscle, flexor digitorum longus and fibularis teresius muscle. Whereas when you go on to the intrinsic muscles, we see we have the abductor hallucis, 
flexor hallucis brevis, brevis, flexor digitorum brevis, abductor digiti minimi, and dorsal introsi. These are the extrinsic intrinsic muscles which can contribute to the arch support. And even in all this, the posterior tibialis is having greater role in support of the longitudinal arch. Right, so this uh, there is no other way you have to just remember the name. If you can't remember all the names, at least remember the majority of the names. For example, you have flexor hallucis brevis, flexor digitorum brevis, both are just related to each other. You have abductor hallucis, you have abductor digiti minimi, both are related. You just have to remember abductor, abductor, flexor, flexor two flexors, two abductors. Okay, you have to remember, right? Hallucis is the as well as minimizer. Flexor hallucis, hallucis, hallucis also here. Here it is a digitorum, digitorum. So if you correlate that, you can just remember that. Tibialis anterior is the definitely tibialis posterior. So fibularis longus and fibularis teresius. So that's also related. You can study by relation, uh, relating those names because otherwise you would forget the names of the muscles. Now, uh, all these muscles have some definite role in the support of the arms. This is all about this session about the arches of the foot. We had covered it in the three sessions. Right now, the first session was about the function of the arch. What are the arches? What are its structures? What are its function? At that time, we had discussed the stability of the arch is contributed by the muscle design, the ligaments as well as muscle. If you can, you can write that muscle, this muscles at that region when you are writing for the examination point of view. Then we have discussed the plantar aponeurosis or plantar fascia and finally the weight distribution strategies. So if this question is asked like uh, what are plantar arches and explain its mechanism for example for a 15 or a 20 mark exam question if it is asked you have to write on uh, what are plantar arches initially you have to write which are the types of the plantar arches you have to write which all are the structures involved in the longitudinal arch in the medial arch then you have to write about the stability of the arch then you have to write about the function of the arch then you have to write about the weight the distribution of the arch in stability you have to also mention the muscles stability involves a bone uh, different uh, structures of the bone inclination of the bones and peculiarity wedge shaped uniform bones etc you have to write uh, in stability then you have to also write about the ligaments then you have to write about the muscles and the function of the arch and finally the weight distribution if it is a plantar arches you don't have to stress a great on to the plantar aponeurosis you have to write there is plantar aponeurosis you have to just briefly write on what are the mechanism for example thyroid and truss mechanism and just briefly mention the windlass mechanism no need to go in deep into the metatarsal uh, role in the contribution of the arch but sometimes the question can be reversed they can ask you what is plantar arches sorry plantar fascia what is plantar aponeurosis if that is how the question is asked you have to stress on to that you have to just minimize your uh, writing about the arches of the foot this weight distribution strategy comes exactly in the arches of the foot so if arch is answered you have to write more about this weight distribution if it is a plantar aponeurosis you have to stress on to the plantar aponeurosis what is plantar aponeurosis what its orientation what are the structures involved in that what is windlass mechanism what is thyroid truss mechanism then you can write about uh, the plantar arches or you can write plantar arches briefly in the introduction one paragraph about the introduction just write about plantar arches then go for the plantar aponeurosis or plantar aponeurosis and later you can go to the plantar arches and briefly mention about the weight distribution strategies you don't have to mention about the support of the arch like uh, ligaments muscles etc you just have to write in words the uh, uh, arch is supported by the stab uh, stability of the ligaments bones and muscle you don't have to write the names if the plantar aponeurosis is asked but then you have to still you have to look into how far you are able to write with the 15 mark question because it depends upon your writing style if you are just briefly mentioning about the plantar aponeurosis then it is better if you remember something about these arches and muscle you write on that because it's a long answer long as a question because you have to write more about that but if you are very pretty well sure about the windlass mechanism you can draw diagrams about the windlass mechanism you can clearly illustrate the windlass mechanism the role of mtp in increasing the arts what happens in supination what happens in pronation different uh, exactly clearly you can draw attention then you can stress less onto the plantar arches so two ways this question can be asked this is a very important one two one if they are asking about the plantar arches go on to explain about the arches its stability function weight distribution muscular role etc and contribute less into the plantar aponeurosis if the question is a plantar aponeurosis focus on the aponeurosis and focus on the other fun less but you have to write the other things also definitely diagram is important with 
with respect to plantar arches you can draw the diagram which i have already drawn for you this is the foot region this is the uh, if this is the foot region this is the long medial longitudinal arch this is the lateral longitudinal this is the transverse arch you have to write medial side lateral side without marking medial and lateral sides you may not be able to score well okay and definitely mention the key important points like talus is the uh, keystone of the arch remember this one medial cuneiform is the key form of the transverse arch these things are uh, very important with respect to mcq questions also they may ask you which is the muscle which is great having great role in the support of the arch it is not uh, the other muscles but the posterior tibialis muscle i hope that was a very informative session for you if you like the video don't forget to click like button and uh, let me know your suggestions through the comment box and don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't subscribed already.